Hello! In this video, you'll learn how you can limit the growth term of a differential equation. We are modeling the number of rainbow fish in a large aquarium. We constructed a mathematical model for the population size p. The differential equation dp dt equals 0.7 p minus 20. The, the birth rate of 0.7 means that for each fish in the population, 0.7 new fish hatch each day. The resulting population grows exponentially. That is okay for the first few days, but according to this model, there are way too many fish for an aquarium after a few weeks. We try to curb this growth by selling 20 of the rainbow fish each day. Then we calculated the phase line. The graph of the derivative dp dt as a function of p is an increasing line. And this is the resulting phase line. The PDT equals zero in the equilibrium solution of approximately 28 and a half fish. When we start with a population below the equilibrium value, the derivative the PDT is negative and P will decrease and keep decreasing until there are no rainbow fish left. So, each day we sell more fish than the number that hatch from the eggs and we will end up with an empty aquarium. The equilibrium solution of 28.6 is an unstable equilibrium because some of the solutions that start near the equilibrium move away from the equilibrium value. In our case, that is even so for all solutions that start near the equilibrium. Actually, we start with 30 rainbow fish, so above the equilibrium solution. The derivative of p is positive, so p will grow, and then the derivative becomes even larger, and the population will grow faster and faster. The result is that the population grows exponentially. Taking out more than 20 fish a day for example 25, would delay the crowding of the aquarium for a few days. The line of the PDT would lie lower and thus the equilibrium value would be higher. However, the equilibrium would still be unstable. So when you start with too few fish, you'll soon end up with an empty aquarium. And when you start with slightly more fish, soon the population explodes. Of course, this is not what happens in reality, so the mathematical model has to be improved. We conclude that changing the constant term in the differential equation does not make the solution sustainable. The growth of the population is the growth term plus 0.7 times p. The growth rate of 0.7 new fish per fish in the existing population seems to be okay for small populations, but is unrealistic for large populations. When an aquarium gets crowded, the fish will probably lay fewer eggs. Fewer young fish will survive and the death rate will probably increase as well. So, in the mathematical model, the growth rate, rate which is now a constant 0.7, should depend on the size of the population. Let us assume that our aquarium is large enough for a healthy population of 750 rainbow fish. We can then let the growth rate depend on the population size in the following way. The growth rate is now modeled as 0.7 times 1 minus p over 750. When the population is small, p over 750 is small and the growth rate is still approximately 0.7. When p grows, the growth rate becomes smaller. When the aquarium is almost filled to the capaci capacity of 750, p over 750 is almost 1, and the growth rate has decreased to almost 0. In the differential equation for the rainbow fish population, we have adapted the growth rate. When the population size nears the capacity of the aquarium, the growth rate now decreases to zero. Note 
that this new growth factor is only one of the many formulas that can be chosen to model bounded growth. With this new mathematical model, we hope that the simulated population does not grow endlessly anymore. You are going to calculate and validate the results yourself. Have fun with the assignments that follow this video.